In this lesson, you're going to learn how lithium-ion battery cells work in contrast with how standard electrochemical battery cells work. In a lithium-ion battery cell, both electrodes depend on an intercalation mechanism rather than a standard redox chemical reaction. Remember, this is also how the negative electrode in a nickel metal hydride battery cell worked. However, while a nickel metal hydride cell stores hydrogen in its negative electrode, lithium ion cells are able to store lithium in either one and both of the electrodes. Also remember that the lithium that intercalates into the electrodes is stored in the electrodes a lot like water is stored in a sponge. It doesn't change the structure of the electrodes themselves. In the picture on the right, I have illustrated how this works. I've drawn both the negative and the positive electrodes as sets of parallel plates, and I've represented the lithium by purple spheres. This drawing shows lithium being stored in the vacancies between the plates that form the electrodes. Now this is a somewhat simplified illustration, but you're going to see this week that when we study the actual materials that can be used to make the electrodes, that this is pretty close to what's really happening in some of the electrode materials. This is close to what's happening at the microscopic scale. So for now, you can simply think of the electrodes as being materials that somehow have spaces built into their structures, vacancies, into which lithium can intercalate and enter into and move about and from which it can exit as well. And this is done in such a way that the electrodes don't ever participate in a standard chemical reaction that would alter their structure. The structure remains intact. So lithium atoms are stored in the electrodes, and when a lithium atom leaves an electrode, it gives up an electron, and at that point it becomes a positively charged ion in the electrolyte and this positively charged ion can move through the electrolyte from one electrode to the other. And the electron uh, at the same time then moves through the external circuit and it powers the load. And also the positively charged lithium ion from the electrolyte can enter into these electrode materials when an electron is available from the external circuit to allow that to happen. And when it does that, it forms a, an essentially neutrally charged lithium atom inside this structure of the electrode that can move around quite freely. As I mentioned on the previous slide, this intercalation process involves inserting lithium ions into a structure of the host electrode without changing that structure. So in order to be able to do that, the electrode materials are chosen for a lithium ion battery cell uh, to have two key properties. First, the electrode must have this kind of a structure where there are openings and pathways into which the lithium can enter and through which the lithium can move. And secondly, there must be an ability for the material to accept compensating electrons from the external circuit or to give up electrons to that external circuit. In other words, the material must somehow be electronically conductive as well. When a lithium atom is stored inside of the electrode, it is essentially uncharged, neutrally charged. In actual fact, researchers have been able to measure the charge on the lithium atom inside the materials using very specialized laboratory equipment. They found that these lithium atoms do possess a slight positive charge, not a unit charge, but a fractional positive charge. What's happening is that the lithium uh, has an electron associated with it in its outer valence shell, and this electron is being loosely shared with the crystal structure surrounding the location of that lithium atom. And so this electron is slightly ripped away from the atom, but it's still pretty much associated with that lithium atom. So there's a slight positive charge on the lithium and a slight negative charge in the surrounding region in the crystal structure. But for our purposes, we can think of the lithium as being neutrally charged and moving through this crystal structure quite freely. So let's think about what happens when we discharge a lithium-ion battery cell. 
We already know that during discharge, the negative electrode must give up an electron to the external circuit, and it must give up a positive ion into the electrolyte. And this positive ion, remember, is called a, a lithium cation, and this, this cation then can move through the electrolyte. Let's think about what's happening in the particle. When lithium leaves the particle, it leaves behind a vacancy at the surface of this negative electrode particle. This vacancy could be filled with another lithium atom. And what happens is that lithium inside that particle at a more central part of the particle, where lithium is at a higher concentration, moves through a diffusion process from this higher concentration in the center of the particle toward the outside of the particle, so that over time we have a more equal concentration of lithium throughout the particle. And so this process replenishes the availability of lithium at the particle surface. Diffusion is illustrated in this uh, diagram on the right. This is something you've seen many times in your life, I'm sure, whether it was a scientifically conducted experiment or just something you happen to notice. Uh, this example shows a glass of water to the left. And in the second image in the sequence, a drop of purple coloring has been added to that water. In the third and fourth images, you see a progression over time of what happens due to adding that single drop of purple coloring. Uh, the coloring starts at a very high localized concentration in one location and zero concentration at other places. But due to the random motion at the molecular level, this purple dye slowly spreads through the water until there's an equal concentration throughout the entire mixture. And this is exactly what's happening with lithium inside the electrode particles. When I add lithium to an electrode that starts out with no lithium in it, the lithium I have added makes a high concentration at some places, but there's low concentration or zero concentration elsewhere. And over time, due to the random molecular motion, the lithium I have added will diffuse until there's an equal concentration of lithium throughout this particle. Now the same thing happens when I remove lithium, but it's more difficult to conduct an experiment like the one I've illustrated on this slide that can show that. But you can imagine that if we were to take the, the water solution with purple dye in it on the right side of the slide and somehow remove lithium from the, remove the dye rather from the top layer, and so we've got clear water and, um, and then this purple colored water that over time the purple colored water would diffuse into the clear region and uh, you would have a new equilibrium where there was a lower concentration overall. So similarly, when I'm discharging a lithium ion uh, electrode, when I'm removing lithium from it, lithium from higher concentrations interior to the particle will, will diffuse outward to replenish those uh, low concentration areas until there's an equilibrium throughout. When lithium exits the surface of the electrode, it gives up an electron, and that electron travels through the external circuit from the negative electrode across through the circuit to the positive electrode, and it powers the load. And then at the surface of the positive electrode particles, a positively charged lithium atom from the electrolyte and an electron from the external circuit join together to make a neutrally charged lithium atom, which enters into the electrode particle. Then the lithium concentration at the surface of that positive electrode particle is higher because of added lithium there than it is in the interior to the particle. And so lithium diffuses over time throughout the positive electrode particle to equalize the concentration throughout that particle. When we charge a lithium ion battery cell, exactly the same process happens, but in the opposite direction. Uh, ideally, this discharge and charge process is completely reversible. So a lithium ion battery cell could be charged in, in, uh, and recharged and discharged an infinite number of times. Uh, we know that's not true. We'll discuss why that's the case over the course of the specialization. There are side reactions and other degradation processes happening, but at least the ideal situation is that this can happen infinitely often. Uh, and lithium is able then to pass back and forth between the electrodes during charge and discharge. So during charge, lithium exits the surface of the positive electrode particle now. 
it becomes positively charged in the electrolyte. It gives up an electron, uh, and this electron is forced by the charger through the external circuit across to the negative electrode. At the negative electrode, a positively charged lithium cation from the electrolyte joins with this electron, forms a neutrally charged lithium atom, which then enters the negative electrode particle at the surface. And again, there will be a higher concentration of lithium at the surface of the negative electrode particle when we do this than there is at the interior of the particle. And so lithium will diffuse inward and that over time we will get an equilibrium concentration. And similarly in the positive electrode particle, because I've removed lithium from the surface, there will be a higher concentration on the positive electrode center than the surface and lithium will diffuse over time to equalize that concentration a few times. Now I've mentioned a few times in uh, this course so far that electrodes consist of particles of material. They are not homogeneous, just blocks of, of materials. And here I show some scanning electron microscope or SEM photographs of electrode materials to give you a better visual understanding of what this really looks like. In the left photograph, you can see an SEM image of a graphite material that's used in the negative electrodes of many lithium ion battery cells. And in the right image, you can see an SEM image of lithium manganese oxide material that's used in the positive electrode of some lithium ion battery cells. And so you can see that the electrode really has many, many, many small particles instead of one single homogeneous block of material. The reason for this is to increase the overall surface area of the electrode as much as reasonably possible. Because as we've seen, lithium enters and exits the electrode through the surface. And this process of lithium entering and exiting the particles is actually fairly slow per unit surface area of the electrode. But if we increase the surface area, even though the process is slow per unit surface area, if we increase the surface area, the total rate of lithium entering and exiting can be quite fast. So if we want high rates of charge and discharge, if we want high power lithium ion battery cells, we want to increase the surface area as much as possible. And this is done by making small particles. If you look at the amount of surface area per unit volume, uh, when I make small particles, that greatly increases the surface area and therefore greatly increases the, the current rate capability of a cell and the power level of a cell also. So why don't we take this to extreme, just grind these particles down until they're just super, super small. The reason that you're going to learn about in the fourth, special, fourth specialization course is that while the ideal desired chemical reaction is rate dependent on surface area. Some of the side reactions that cause a cell to fail also depend on the surface area. And so there's a trade-off. I want the cell particles to be small to get high power, but I also want them to be large so that the cells degrade more slowly. And this is an engineering trade-off that must be optimized when we design the battery cells. The image on this slide shows you a different view of an electrode. On the previous slide, the electrodes were prepared by taking an electrode from a cell and slicing it with a razor blade to make a cross section that could be photographed. Uh, but while you might imagine that a razor blade is very, very sharp and can make a very nice sharp cut, it's not sharp enough or thin enough to cut through the particles that we're talking about in the electrodes. The image on this slide was prepared in a different way. Uh, this image was created by taking an electrode and using a focused ion beam or an FIB device to slice through the electrode. And uh, this technology is able to actually cut through all the particles as well. So. Instead of pushing the particles to one side or another like a razor blade would do, we're actually slicing down 
the middle of the particles and this gives you a better idea of what that really looks like in the particle in the electrode in the image you can also maybe more clearly see the spaces between the bar the particles the voids and these voids are filled with electrolyte inside uh, an actual electrode um, there are some other materials in the electrodes that we can't see in these photographs there are binders that glue things together glue the particles together so that the particles remain in contact with each other and don't easily separate and that's important so that there is a pathway for the electrons to flow to the external circuit uh, there are also conductive additives that coat the surfaces of particles to enhance their ability to conduct electrons because some of the materials that are used in lithium-ion battery cells do not conduct electrons very well these extra materials, the binders and the conductive additives, are not active in the sense that they don't participate in the normal chemical reactions of the battery cell. Uh, so if you read articles about lithium ion cells, these binders and additives are not often mentioned, even though they are always present in a practical cell. There are also often things added to the electrolyte in order to inhibit some of the side reactions which otherwise cause the cell to age and to grade. Uh, these additives in the electrolyte are not often talked about either, but they are always present in a practical cell. So in summary, in this lesson you've learned that a lithium ion battery cell has a positive and a negative electrode both of which are made of small particles in order to increase their surface area and therefore to increase their power capability. You've learned that these particles are made from compounds that internally have an open crystal structure that can accept lithium into them without changing that structure. You've learned that lithium can intercalate into these particles and can deintercalate out of the particles and this is something that happens at the surface. Inside the particles, lithium diffuses over time to equalize the concentrations of lithium. During discharge, lithium moves from the negative electrode particles to the positive electrode particles through this intermediary electrolyte where positively charged lithium cations are the charge car carriers. Uh, during the charging process, the same thing happens but in the opposite direction. And you've seen that electrons move through the external circuit. When I'm discharging, they move from the negative electrode to the positive electrode, and charging, they go the other direction.